Welcome back everybody. Today I'll show you my design to automate the thermal lily from the Minecraft mod Batania that is efficient and avoids much inactive time, only wasting 10 seconds per each lava source consumed. The thermal lily is tricky to automate and has some unique requirements that I had to account for, but we will get to those later in the video. For those that are experienced with redstone and Batania, you may be able to rebuild by pausing the video now to see the layout. I will quickly review the smaller details at the timestamp shown here, including how to set up the hoppers below the dispenser to filter out empty buckets. The design had a few requirements and things I found important that I wanted to include. It was important to me that the design only required the Batania mod to build. To be compact and stackable. To require either the regular thermal lily or the floating thermal lily. Note that if you build it incorrectly, you may risk burning up your normal thermal lily where you would be protected with the floating thermal lily. To be as closely synced with the thermal lily cooldown as possible, this design only wastes 10 seconds per cycle. To be able to be shut off at any time. You may find using the Monastery Modicle to see the block states of redstone components helpful as it shows the redstone properties like redstone signal strength, comparator mode states, and delay on repeaters. However, I have a mod called Jade that will show you information at the top of the video, though use of this mod is not needed to use this farm. Thermal lilies can quickly overwhelm your mana spreaders if you're not careful. An elven mana spreader can support three thermal lilies simultaneously, an elven mana spreader with a potency lens can support four, and the Gaia spreader can support at least six. When using this farm, be sure that all thermal lilies are connected to your spreader before running the farm. The footprint of this build is seven blocks wide, six blocks deep, and two blocks high. The thermal lily is placed at the third position from the left on the seven block long section. Here is a list of ingredients that you will need. Feel free to pause the video to review it. You may use non-transparent blocks, such as iron bars as a safety precaution. I will go over a compact way to turn off all the layers at once, which will need full blocks and redstone torches. Don't forget that you will need a good source of lava with plenty of storage and many stacks of empty buckets. I will not be going over a lava farm in this video as there are plenty of videos with vanilla designs already available. I will now go over each circuit of the build and describe in brief how they work for those who are curious. First, you want to find a suitable location and place your thermal lily three from the left on the close side of the long edge. You will get your wand of the forest out and you're going to switch the, it to bind mode and bind your thermal lily to your mana spreader. Thermal lilies have a few states that we will need to account for. We can ignore the first state, which is when it is placed down, giving a signal strength of 15. While the thermal lily is on cooldown, it will emit an analog signal indicating what the cooldown will be, and that's going to be a total of the signal strength it provides times 20 seconds. After its cooldown has elapsed, the signal will persist until it receives more lava, adding to the challenge. This means that we will have to store the signal so we can work with it. Now you can't just get the signal from the comparator because that's going to be a static signal. What you actually need is the memory cell, which you're going to get by making this shape right here. This is going to look like it has a static signal, but because we have this comparator in subtractor mode, we'll be able to decrement the signal one by one. Now to prevent this comparator from overwriting the memory cell, we need to give it a pulse. We're going to do that by grabbing another comparator signal from this and sending it around. Make sure that you have the redstone repeater on two ticks. Here's where we decrement the signal one by one each time. Whenever this hourglass with 20 sand goes around, what it'll do is it'll send a signal from here all the way around. This is going to end up being a signal of 14, and this one coming in from the back is going to be 15. So it's going to be just one coming out of there. Now we cannot have the signal one block closer because either this redstone wire is going to conflict with this redstone wire, or whenever or we're going to have to put it on this side and it's going to be conflicting with this comparator. We also need to stop the hourglass from outputting its signal when we have something stored in memory. We're going to do that by putting two redstone repeaters into the side of this comparator on subtractor mode. That's going to lead into this block and this redstone dust with this torch on, the, the, on that block. We're going to put a, put a dispenser on that side, but we're not going to put anything in there just yet. As this design evolved, the recurrent laryngeal nerve, I mean the recurrent loop nullifier, had to go all the way around the redstone components to get back over here. So all you need to do is follow this pattern for the redstone going all the way around, and you're going to lead it into this redstone dust on the side of the subtracting comparator. From the back of the dispenser, 
We are just needing to put a comparator into a block into this redstone torch, and that's going to turn on this redstone whenever there is no lava left. Now you can place your hoppers leading from underneath the dispenser over one and then into a chest, which is going to be your output. This hopper, make sure you fill it up all the way in the first slot with buckets, and you're going to put one dummy item in the rest of the slots. And underneath the dispenser, similarly, you're going to put in a few buckets, at least two, and then you're going to need a different burner item. This will filter out only empty buckets from the dispenser. You will fill in lava buckets through this hopper leading into the side of the dispenser. To manually turn off the farm, all you need to do is put a lever to the side of this block right here. That way the redstone will always be turned on. And finally, it'll be a good idea to turn off the entire system whenever your system fills up with mana. You'll do this by putting a redstone signal into this torch tower. The redstone is going to turn off this torch, which turns this block and this redstone torch on, which will line up perfectly with this redstone wire. When you do multiple layers, you will be able to actually stack these one by one on top of each other, and they'll all turn off at the same time. That way, no lava will be dispensed when the thermal lily can no longer accept any. If you have problems, please check the description and check for a pinned comment, as they will be updated with useful tips and corrections that I may have made. Special thanks to my friend William, who inspired me to make this design, coming up with the idea to use a memory cell and a decrementer. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a great day.